Welcome to this series of videos on accessibility requirements for public procurement of ICT products and services in Europe, the EN301549 standard. This is video number 9. Since chapter 9 of the standard is quite long, we have divided it into two parts, and this is the first one. The videos are sponsored by Microsoft and produced by Funka. My name is Susanna Loren. I am an accessibility expert with a long experience in standardization. In this video, we are going to take a closer look at web solutions, but many of the requirements that we talk about here are also relevant for other digital documents and other software. So even if you do not procure a traditional web interface, you should watch this video. You may ask yourself what the web means in this context. In the EN standard, the web includes websites, web applications, intranet, extranet, web-based apps, and much more. But the requirements in this chapter are also relevant if you have other types of software that are not shown in a web browser, or if you have a mobile app or digital documents, like PDFs, for example. Chapter 10 covers documents, and Chapter 11 has to do with other software. But both of these chapters refer to the requirements in Chapter 9. So this video is a good place to start. There are three subsections in this chapter. The first one is general. The second one covers web content requirements. And the third one is Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, or WCAG 2.0, the conformance requirements. 9.1 does not include any requirements, but rather defines the scope of Chapter 9. It says what types of interfaces that are covered, and also gives instructions on how to use the chapter. In this subsection, the standard also describes how the EN standard refers to the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, or WCAG 2.0, and how WCAG is to be used to fulfill the requirements in the EN301549. Since WCAG is such a central part of this chapter, we will start this video with describing WCAG. Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, also known as WCAG, are the guidelines referred to around the world when it comes to web accessibility. WCAG was developed by the World Wide Web Consortium, or W3C, to be a technology-independent set of success criteria defining how web-based content should appear and work to cater for all user needs, regardless if the user has an impairment or not. WCAG 2.0 was released in 2008, and these guidelines are the common denominator for much of the work being done on accessibility in web-based interfaces worldwide. Instead of inventing the same thing in EN301549, the standard uses WCAG by referring to the different success criteria in WCAG 2.0. Let's take a closer look at WCAG. WCAG is divided into four principles. The first one says that the web content should be perceivable. It shouldn't require the user to be able to see or hear to be able to get the information. This means that images need a text equivalent, audio recordings need non-audio alternatives, and so on. The second principle says that the web content should be operable. That means that you should be able to use the interface even if you cannot use a mouse. The guidelines in this principle are targeted on making sure that the content could be navigated with a keyboard and with assistive technology that uses keyboard commands to help users navigate, like voice control, for example. The third principle says that the web content should be understandable. This includes guidelines to make the content readable in a comprehensible way by assistive technology and making text understandable for users. The last principle is targeted on making the web content robust enough to be possible to interpret correctly and possible to convert and present in different ways. Go. In the four principles, there are a total of 12 guidelines. These 12 guidelines break down the principles in smaller parts, but it is the success criteria that are important. The 12 guidelines has a total of 61 success criteria. These success criteria are the measurable requirements, which is the core of WCAG. The 61 success criteria need to be met to meet the requirements of WCAG. Each success criterion specifies one important aspect of the content, this could, for example, be defining what would be a sufficient contrast ratio between text and background, 
or that the language used should be defined programmatically so that text-to-speech software is able to choose the right voice for the text. The different success criteria are divided into three levels. Level A consists of the 25 most basic success criteria. Level AA includes all 25 Level A criteria plus 13 more, that is a total of 38 different success criteria. Level AAA includes all 61 success criteria. The EN301549 requires that any web-based solution shall meet the 38 success criteria on level AA in WCAG. WCAG is developed to be technology independent. This means that the success criteria in WCAG can be applied regardless of the technology being used. The same success criterion can be used on, for example, HTML, PDF, Java or any other technology. But you have to make sure that you use a technology that can meet the requirements of WCAG and that it works with assistive technology and user agents. In section 9.2, the EN301549 maps to each individual success criterion in WCAG. We will have a short look at all 38 requirements, but since this is quite complex, you will need to dig deeper to understand what each success criterion means in the context of your solution. 9.2.1 Non-Text Content is based on WCAG 2.0 Success Criterion 1.1.1 Non-Text Content. Since text is the easiest form of information to convert and present in different ways by assisted technology, an important idea in WCAG is to provide text equivalents to content that is not text. Most commonly, this applies to images. If you have an image that gives some information to the user, there should also be a text giving the same information. Exactly how this is done depends on the situation. On an ordinary web page, this is often done with the HTML code for ALT. This code is picked up by assistive technology so that users that cannot see the image get the equivalent information. In some situations, a visual text might be a more suitable way of giving the information. The requirement applies to all non-text content that has some information or meaning to the user, not only images. 9.2.2 audio only and video only pre-recorded is based on WCAG 2.0 success criterion 1.2.1 audio only and video only pre-recorded. If you either have a video without audio information or an audio track without video and this is not a media alternative for text, you need to provide a text alternative or if it is a video without audio you might provide an audio track as an alternative giving the user the same information. The goal here is that the user shouldn't be required to hear or see to get the information. Therefore, it's also important that the alternative is easy to find. One example could be a website with a podcast published. As an alternative, there is a text transcript that the user can read. The transcript is provided via a link just beneath the audio track. This requirement is only relevant for pre-recorded media. If you have a live stream, this requirement is not applicable. 9.2.3 Captions pre-recorded is based on WCAG 2.0 Success Criterion 1.2.2 Captions pre-recorded. Captions are a text version of the spoken dialogue and also provide information on who is speaking and explain other sounds in a video. Captions are used to give hearing-impaired users equivalent information as other users get from listening to the video. If the website has synchronized media, for example a video with an audio track, the media should have captions. If there is a text version of the information, easy accessible in connection to the synchronized media, you do not have to provide captions, but it is recommended to do so anyway. This requirement is only relevant for pre-recorded media. If you have a live stream, this is covered by section 9.2.5, which means success criterion 1.2.4 in WCAG. 9.2.4, audio description or media alternative pre-recorded 
is based on WCAG 2.0 Success Criterion 1.2.3, Audio Description or Media Alternative, pre-recorded. Audio Description is an audio track where a speaker explains what is happening visually in a video. An audio description is used to give visually impaired users equivalent information as other users get from seeing the video. This requirement states that if you have synchronized media, there should be an audio description as well. But if you provide a text equivalent to the media that is easy to access from the video page, then you do not need an audio description. In some situations, for example, with a good speaker integrated into the media, audio description might not be needed. But in other situations, you might need quite extensive audio descriptions to make the content understandable for visually impaired users. This requirement is only relevant for pre-recorded media. If you have a live stream, this requirement is not applicable. 9.2.5 Captions Live is based on WCAG 2.0 Success Criterion 1.2.4 Captions Live. When you have synchronized media that is broadcasted live, you should also provide live captioning. This makes it possible for persons who are deaf or hard of hearing to watch real-time presentations. 9.2.6 Audio Description Pre-Recorded is based on WCAG 2.0 Success Criterion 1.2.5 Audio Description Pre-Recorded. In this requirement, it's obvious that the EN standard is based on another standard. In WCAG, the success criteria 1.2.3 and 1.2.5 are presented on different levels, level A and AA respectively. But in the EN standard, this gets a bit confusing because the requirements are presented separately but on the same level. So this is the same as requirement 9.2.4 with the only difference that you need to have the audio description. It is not good enough to have an alternative text version. If you meet this requirement, you will also meet 9.2.4 at the same time. 9.2.7 Info and Relationships is based on WCAG 2.0 Success Criterion 1.3.1 Info and Relationships. This is one of the most complex success criteria in WCAG. It says that all information, all relationships and all structure that is provided visually through presentation should also be available in text or with code in a way that can be interpreted by user agents and assistive technology. Let's look at a few examples. If you have a web page with a text where there is a heading above the text, most users identify this heading by the visual presentation. It is a bit bolder and bigger than the rest of the text, and it is shown above the text. This tells us visually that it is a heading. But users that cannot see this will not know that it is a heading based on the visual presentation. In HTML, we can label this as a heading with the HTML element h1. By providing this code in the HTML file, we can tell user agents and assistive technology that this text serves the purpose of a heading in the text. This information can then be given with audio or braille to visually impaired users, making it possible to understand the structure and navigate the content. Another example. If you have a form where the user enters information, you need to provide a text that tells the user what to enter in different form fields. This text is often positioned next to the form field, showing us what form field to use for providing what information. Again, this can be very clear visually, but if you cannot see it, you need to get this information in another way. By using the HTML element label for the text label and connecting it with a form field, assistive technology and user agents understand the connection and can help users to understand what information to put in what form field. There are countless situations where you need to make sure that the code gives user agents and assistive technology information on structure and relationships. For example, tables, navigation areas and bullet lists. You need to break down this requirement in smaller parts and see what is relevant for you. The goal of this requirement is that the information and functionality of the interface becomes logical even for users that cannot see the presentation. 
This is not only important for visually impaired users, but for all users that might benefit from adapting the visual presentation to their individual needs, for example, by using assistive technology. 9.2.8, meaningful sequence, is based on WCAG 2.0, success criterion 1.3.2, meaningful sequence. The purpose of this requirement is to ensure that the meaning of the information isn't lost when a user agent changes the presentation or assistive technology converts the information to another format such as sound or braille. In HTML, the order in the code defines a reading order. This order should be logical. Even if you use CSS to position different components in different areas of the screen, the order in the code should make a logical presentation order. For example, the first column in a multi-column text should come before the second column in the code. 9.2.9 .9, Sensory Characteristics is based on WCAG 2.0, Success Criterion 1.3.3 Sensory Characteristics. When giving instructions to the user, you should not rely on sensory characteristics alone. A sensory characteristic could be, for example, see the link to the left and this is not enough. Instead, use something more than just sensory characteristics, like follow the link after the heading so-and-so to the left. Sensory characteristics are not only visual location, it can also be color, shape, size, orientation or sound. If you are sure that the sensory characteristics are the same for all users and situations, you might use it together with something structural but remember that different user agents and assistive technology may change orientation, placement and presentation. The most common example is mobile phones, where the interface in many situations gets a different layout on a small screen than it has on a desktop computer. 9.2.10 Use of color is based on WCAG 2.0, success criterion 1.4.1 Use of color. Color is a great way of enhancing information and help users. One example is the blue color often used for links on the internet. But not all users can see color, and in different situations color might not be rendered the way you intended it to be. Therefore, you should not rely on color alone. Color is good, but remember to use something more than just color to give the information. For links, it might be that you underline the link as a complement to the blue color or use a symbol. In diagrams, you might use different patterns or use lines to connect labels with different areas. These are just some examples. There are many different ways to meet this requirement. If you are unsure, you might consider printing the page in grayscale and see if you can still identify links and understand the information. 9.2.11 Audio Control is based on WCAG 2.0, success criterion 1.4.2, audio control. This requirement is relevant if you have any audio that plays automatically in the interface. To prevent this from hindering users with assistive technology that provides audio information, you need to give the user the possibility to stop or pause the audio in the interface. It is also sufficient if you make it possible to alter the volume of the audio independently from the overall system volume. Remember that in most situations users prefer that audio does not start automatically, so consider avoiding it. This goes for synchronized media as well. 9.2.12 Contrast Minimum is based on WCAG 2.0, success criterion 1.4.3 Contrast Minimum. As more and more users access the web on small screens and outdoors, the importance of good contrasts has become a more mainstream requirement. On a scale where 21 to 1 is black and white, and 1 to 1 is no difference at all, the contrast between text and background should be at least 4.5 to 1, except if the text is large. Here, large scale texts means 18 points regular or 14 points bold. There are a lot of different tools to help you measure contrast, freely available on the internet. Remember that in many situations, it is preferable to use even better contrasts. Do not strive for the bare minimum. Try to have some margin to the minimum value. 9.2.13 Resize text 
is based on WCAG 2.0 success criterion 1.4.4, resize text. Users need to adapt the presentations in different situations. One text size might work fine in one context, but not as well in another. A text size that works fine for one person might be too small for another. Therefore, the user must be able to zoom the text at least 200% without loss of information or functionality. On an average web page, you should make sure that the user can zoom with the built-in zooming functionality in the browser. This includes the mobile web browsers. On an information kiosk, it might not be possible to zoom in the same way, but then you can provide a mechanism in the interface to zoom. The solution might need to be adapted for the individual situation. Remember that 200% is the minimum. In many cases, users might want to zoom more than that. Do not limit the possibility to 200% if you do not have to. 9.2.14, Images of Text, is based on WCAG 2.0, Success Criterion 1.4.5, Images of Text. Avoid using images to represent text. Images are good and text is good, but do not mix up the two. Images showing text creates problems for many users, for example users with reading difficulties that need to change color and font, and visually impaired users that need to zoom the text. Text in images cannot be changed into other fonts by assistive technology, and the color is difficult or impossible to change in a reliable way. An example. When zooming an image, the text gets pixelated and hard to read. When zooming real text, the assistive technology can recalculate and form the text with more pixels, keeping it sharp. In some situations, you might need to have images of text. One example being diagrams and complex illustrations. In that situation, it is important that you provide the same information in text and you should try to use vector graphics to make the text possible to zoom while preserving it sharp. Since chapter 9 of the EN standard is quite a long one, we have broken it down in two parts. This is the end of the first part. The second part of chapter 9 is covered in the next video, video 9, part 2. Thanks for watching.